the original Doom wasn't just a game full of guns, mayhem, and explosions. Everything about it teaches the player new things as they progress through it. The earliest levels show you the basics of the game, and quickly teach you that in order to progress, you'll need to do more than shoot the bad guys. In the earliest levels, objectives are placed behind locked doors, but the keys to these doors are almost always in plain sight. This causes the player to explore the map, attempting to find their way to the key so they may progress through the level. Throughout that exploration, the player encounters enemies of a large variety. As the player progresses through Doom, they continue to explore, but the levels quickly become far less non-linear. While the main objectives are still locked behind doors, the keys quickly become hidden throughout the map. Moreover, players will continue to explore the levels for weapons and items. In the same way that Doom shows keys in plain sight, it also presents new weaponry and power-ups just out of reach for the player. If you want to add these new items to your arsenal, you'll need to explore the map and fight all the enemies in your way in order to do so. Eventually, in the later levels, the player is placed into levels where almost nothing is shown to them. No hints, no clues. It is up to them to find what they need in order to progress. But at this late stage in the game, they already know exactly how to do this. Doom was released in 1993, but in this video I am discussing the re-release entitled The Ultimate Doom, which adds a fourth episode of levels to accompany the original three episodes. When it comes to reception, I don't think I've met a single person who has not heard of Doom. It's the original shooter. Everything about its design, of its enemies, its guns, and the maps has become a staple of game design, even to this day. Critically, the game has a Metacritic review of 9.0 and a 95% positive Steam review. Whether intentional or unintentional, the designers of Doom managed to use the concepts of experiential learning and schema to build a game where the player is always learning. To analyze this in more detail, we'll see how each enemy's form of attack causes the player to move differently and use a different weapon against them. I'll also mention how each enemy has a different rate of stun and how that affects weapon choice. First we have Lost Souls, which fly at the player, causing the player to move diagonally to avoid their oncoming assaults, but because they get so close, the shotgun works best here. Imps shoot slow-moving projectiles at the player and will actively move in between firing off new shots. Players will be able to slowly move past these projectiles and use the time in between the firing to get shots in against the imps. While doing this, they will move laterally to dodge the shots themselves. The player has a few options here, but generally, longer range bullet weapons work best because of the distance that the imp projectiles can cover. Like the imps, cacodemons can fly and fire slow moving projectiles, but have a much lower rate of being stunned than other enemies. This means that the most effective way to fight them is to move laterally, while also firing constantly at them using the minigun to stun them over and over. This means they won't fire back, allowing the player to win without taking any damage, if they're lucky. Barons of Hell move very slowly, but throw powerful, slow-moving projectiles at the player. This encourages the player to move around them in a circle, allowing them to constantly barrage them with damage. However, their stun rate is extremely low, and they have a very, very high amount of health. This means the best weapon to take them on is the rocket launcher, because the player can maintain a long-range distance from them, but stunning this enemy isn't the best course of action. Inversely, there are enemies who utilize non-projectile forms of attack. Zombie men and shotgun guys utilize hitscan weapons. This causes the player to find cover from them, unlike the other enemies that they can dodge and weave between. Even though these enemies can dish out a lot more damage, they have a significantly lower amount of health which means that just about any weapon can do the job against them. This is also why you see them a lot more in the earlier levels, and a lot less in the later levels. On the further end of the spectrum, we have the demons. Demons are large, gorilla-sized enemies that charge at you, causing the player to run backwards to avoid them. They quickly move in, attacking the player with massive punches. They also have a bit more health than the imps, but that's slightly balanced because they die in about three shotgun hits. Finally, we have the Cyber Demon and the Spider Mastermind, both of which incorporate extremely fast moving projectiles, and can move at the same speed as an imp. Needless to say, they are far more difficult than their lesser counterparts. However, the player has basically been training up until these big boss battle levels against enemies that directly help them learn how to fight them. 
there are quite a few similarities between these two bosses and their so-called minions. The Cyber Demon has more traits we can look at to determine similarities than the Spider Mastermind. First of all, they look like a large baron and share characteristics of imps with their super fast projectiles. But at the same time, their ability to navigate the battlefield suggests to the player that cover would be a good option. All of the previously formed schema about other enemies plays into this boss battle. The player understands how to fight the bosses because the enemies that they've been battling are essentially broken down pieces of the bosses themselves. After you complete a level of doom, a short intermission screen detailing the percentage of enemies you've killed, items you've picked up, secrets you've discovered, your level time, and the par time of that level that the game has built in show up. I'd say this is generally how the player is scored, but ultimately when you complete a level, you can move on to the next regardless of how well you did. These screens do give the player some indication of replay value as whenever I see that I didn't find every secret, it makes me want to go back and explore the areas more to uncover something I might not have before. One thing that I believe should be taken into consideration is the way that Doom designs its enemies through orthogonal unit differentiation. The definition of this is when units in a game can be described by actions, abilities, and characteristics that are orthogonal to each other regarding functionality. This concept was coined by Harvey Smith, a designer who worked on the Deus Ex games. Using this type of design, we are able to create video game entities that the player will quickly understand and remember upon interaction. It's the same reason why anybody who has played Borderlands 2 can tell you not only how the enemies act, but which damage types will affect them best, even if they haven't played in years. By utilizing a methodology of design that reinforces the creation of schema through experiential learning, we can teach people not only facts, but concepts and advanced understanding of topics. Now this does not have to be applied only to enemy design. The game Foldit utilizes this kind of game design to create puzzles built specifically around real-world retrovirus research. The game simulates the creation of a retrovirus and asks the player to create proteins in the virtual space that would be able to block the virus. By creating different viruses for the player to combat, and slowly incorporating more and more aspects into the game, scientists were actually able to create proteins that could combat serious viruses. The gamers who played Foldit walked away from it learning how proteins actually worked. This isn't a situation of chocolate covered broccoli. By actually presenting extremely high level concepts through experiential learning, people with little to no familiarity with protein construction or virology were able to accomplish things that those with PhDs were baffled by. Doom speaks to the majority of gamers as the original shooter. It stands out as something new and fun, and is notorious for its blood and gore. When it originally came out, people were concerned about the violent direction that video games were going, and how bloody and death-oriented Doom was in contrast to the games of that period. While the controversy of Doom speaks more about our society, Doom itself has had very little in the way of actual societal reflection. The game is about killing demons. Everything the player does can fall under that one umbrella term. The newer games take that to the next level and almost completely take the story out of the game. The new player character is essentially born to kill demons and that's pretty much what they do. When looking at the video game landscape at the time, it's easy to see why Doom had so much love put into it. Tons of new games hit the ground including Myst, Mortal Kombat 2, Sam and Max, and Mega Man X, many of which are considered to be some of the best games in their class for that time period. Doom's design was no mistake. The designers at id Software wanted to deliver a new kind of gameplay experience, one that not only had to blow the mind of the player with its impressive 3D graphics, but one that had to keep them coming back for more. Each aspect of the game was specifically designed to feed into the most positive aspects of what players in playtesting enjoyed. Exploring massive maps, killing tons of demons, and feeling badass. More specifically, Doom is built on the same framework as the game Wolfenstein 3D and uses that entire game as its engine. Doom was the first game many considered to be the first full first person shooter, but Wolfenstein 3D is the grandfather of that genre. Doom's design was heavily influenced on the positive aspects of Wolfenstein, expanding on them with more enemies, maps, 
and verticality, while also removing concepts that originally just didn't work. Doom explores every aspect of its design in some way, whether it's map design, enemy design, weapon variation, or secret placement. But while each of these concepts feels explored to some extent, I can't help but want more. The only improvement I could see to the game's instructional design would be adding more situations with more of the enemy types. There are already a massive amount of these in the game, but having more with weapon limitations and variety can make encounters with each one more engaging. If the player only had access to weapons that made them feel helpless against a certain enemy type, then it would be more engaging to learn from that experience, as they'd learn to fight these enemies with the lowest amount of power in their arsenal. Thankfully for us, id Software has released 9 Doom games in the last 28 years, which means there's a lot more demon slaying action for us to explore.